Hey, welcome to the show, my friends. My name is Brian. That is Shane. This is the podcast, and we're talking about Venom. Let there be carnage. <laughs> but first off, to all you members, because we are going to talk about Venom. That's why we're here tonight. Just want to tell you, it's great to be here with you guys on a Thursday night. Brian and I had this interesting thing today. We're like, you know what? We, uh, you know, it's starting tonight. It's, you know, Venom 2 comes out tonight. We're like, what? No way. And uh, he said, you know what? Let's do this as a member stream. Let's just go out. Let's watch the movie, come back, and let's give our members a treat. So uh, we're here for you guys and looking forward to talking about this. Hopefully you guys have had a great week. Uh, tomorrow, we still got our live show. So we're going to be uh, hooking that up one o'clock with special guests. Who's our special guest, Brian? Robert Meyer Burnett, RMB in the hizzy. Right. And if you don't know who he is, of course, he was a, uh, attached to Star Trek for a lot of years. Yeah. And um, he knows a lot about it. So we're excited to do this. Yes, we are. Uh, I actually, uh, that I was, I remember I was watching the movie and toward the end, I was like, listen, if this dude doesn't say, let there be carnage, I'm going to lose my damn mind. <laughs> well, and it, it happened once, which was appropriate. Yes, uh, yes. And we need to talk, uh, toward the end of this, we need to talk about, you know, the rating, because it was PG-13, They, <laughs> which means that they, they're allowed to use one curse word. Oh, basically. yeah. And they yes. used one curse word. And I got, regardless of how I feel about the movie, because I'm, it's, 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 wishy-washy but that one use of the curse word was perfection yeah we'll 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 definitely talk about that so why don't you launch us off here properly okay we are talking about venom let there be carnage and let me break it down for you real quick this is the second movie this is the sequel to venom the movie with tom hardy and uh some other people and it was fun and it was weird but it worked. And I think uh, a lot of the success on that movie was because it was part of the Marvel universe and the whole what if and what if it crosses over and definitely rode the coattails a little bit. It wasn't a perfect movie, but it was entertaining and it was a new concept. And I uh, gotta be honest, because Tom Hardy is Tom Hardy, you know, um, I remember walking out of that theater thinking, good movie. Good enough. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna hold off on giving you any spoilers here for a couple minutes. I'm talking about the first movie right now. Oh, you're talking about the first movie? Yeah. I, thought, oh, okay. I remember leaving the theater thinking, good enough for this, the, the okay. first movie. Popcorn worthy, yes. Yes. And the reason was because Tom Hardy is Tom Hardy. He was able to pull it off. He definitely carried that film. And I got to be honest, with this movie, I feel like he carried the film too. But I don't think it was as good. But we'll get into that. Yeah, no, you're 100% right. Uh, Venom, Let There Be Carnage, uh, PG-13, one hour and 30 minute film. Red flags there. Let's just start with that. Although my um, wife uh, actually enjoyed it and she was like, I'm so glad it was so it was short. But <laughs> you have to understand every movie we go to that's like one of my movies, she's like, it's too long. Yeah, we won't say why. <laughs> we won't give this answer because we're, we're doing no spoilers here for a couple minutes. But your wife liked it because of the end credit scene. And you can take that. We can talk about that later. Yes, and that's true. Right? Yeah. Um, but Venom, Let There Be Carnage, rated PG-13, an hour and 30 minutes, directed by Andy Serkis, uh, the writers, Kelly Marcel. Tom Hardy is story by. So apparently Tom Hardy actually came up with a story for this one. Of course, it's starring Tom Hardy, Woody Harrelson, and Michelle Williams. Uh, the movie overall is, um, this is what I will tell you um, before we go into too many details. If you want to go see a movie that is a little bit fun, I would, I would concur with what Brian said, that it's still probably popcorn worthy. But definitely, if you're expecting a replay of the first movie in, in order of, of how good it is, that's not going to be the case. Do not take your kids to this movie unless you uh, no. are okay with sharing some really vulgar words that are just not appropriate for PG-13. Not sure how they got by the censors, to be honest with you, uh, on a few of those. Um, but I would say that, uh, honestly, if uh, my, <laughs> you know, what I really want to say about this movie is uh, if you go see it, great. Uh, if you don't go see it, it won't hurt to grab it on Amazon Prime in about 45 days. 
Right, because that's where it would be. That's where it would be. Yeah. And now we'll probably go into some spoilers. So if you are watching this and you want to click off and then maybe come back after you've seen the movie. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, before otherwise... spoilers. Before spoilers. You got to go more? Excuse me. Before spoilers. Um, you know, I do want to say that I agree with Shane. It wasn't as good. However, it was still popcorn worthy. Um, it ain't life changing. Uh, you can 100% skip this and watch it on Amazon. Sure. Um, I do think this. I think that the novelty of him talking to himself and all that, even though it was probably better in this movie, like he's gotten he's gotten better at it. I feel like that's worn off a little bit. And there was a lot of sort of exposition leading up to stuff and a lot of stuff that was unnecessary, which we're going to get into this spoiler section. There was things like they cut, they obviously cut the runtime of this movie down too short, but they decided to leave in scenes that were 100% unnecessary, almost just so they can talk about them in the media as sort of some virtue signaling bait, which we're going to get into this spoiler section, right? Possibly. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah. <clears throat> That didn't bother me too much, but so if I you haven't seen it and you're looking for us to sign off on it, I can't do that. Yeah, I don't think so. And if I'm being 100% honest with you, I will, as we talk about this more, I do believe this was a money grab movie. Um, I do believe that it's not Tom Hardy's best work. And I will also tell you that I believe they're only doing this as a setup to eventually try to get to Spider Man. So, I mean, yeah. Um, yes. Uh, and we're going to go way, we're going to wait, we're going, we're going to go more into that. Oh, we're going to go, we're going to explain that. Yeah. So here's the deal. Um, I'm going to play a little clip that advertises that you need to subscribe and like to us. But then after Please that, do. it's all spoilers, baby. So if you haven't seen the movie and you're like, oh, I don't want to be spoiled because I plan to see it anyways, then hit that like subscribe button and come back later. But Please do, yeah. But if you haven't seen the movie or you don't plan to see it or you don't care about spoilers, and stick around, and we'll be back. We'll be back in about 30 seconds. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do so now. And give us a thumbs up if you want more amazing revelations about your favorite shows. Also, click the notification bell to never miss an episode because YouTube is a fickle mistress. All right. Now, baby, it's spoiler time! <laughs> spoiler time! I, I decided to use the whole uh, like subscribe thing as like the break, so you can see oh, really? very clearly when it happens. You know that was the idea. <clears throat> well, I got to tell you, um, it's it's this has been a very interesting uh, experience. I was actually looking up right now, trying to look. I was looking at the director, and it says the director is Andy Serkis, which yes. surprised me. Surprising, because surprised what? me. Yeah, so I'm looking at Andy Serkis. Andy Serkis has 108 acting credits, okay? 108 acting credits. He's a, you know, he was Gollum in, in Lord of the Rings. He was the voice of Gollum and the face, really. And uh, when you click on his director credits, <clears throat> what pops up is uh, Heavenly Sword, which was a video game, Breathe, which I'm not even sure that was a movie, a TV movie, The Ruins of Empires, Mal Glee, Legend of the Jungle, 2018, and now Venom, Let There Be Carnage. So he is a very new director, a very, very, very new director. So kudos to him for trying to, you know, pull this off and do it. Um, I am ultimately a little disappointed in this movie, though, and I don't know. I mean, he's basically getting some coattails from the first Venom movie, and he'll get credit for that. So this isn't going to kill him, but it's also, I don't think there was anything in this movie that elevated him. Uh, to be like, wow, what a great director. No, in yeah. fact, there's, there's a lot of problems in this movie, that some things that did not make sense uh, that we'll have to point out. Yeah, and um, yeah, you're right. And I do feel like the studio probably had too much control. And I don't want to, I don't want to throw it all in the studio. I'm not trying to give them an out per se, right? Right. But to be honest, <clears throat> some of the scenes and if you have some of the scenes that they decided to um to include seemed entirely unnecessary like it didn't it didn't add anything to the movie other than something to talk about on twitter you know 
yeah i mean you're talking about some of the like cut scenes where like like uh venom at the halloween party things like that is that what you're talking about i mean the rave the rave whatever yeah, i think it was a ho- i mean it was a dress-up thing so i i believe it was no, supposed it was to be a, halloween it a, yeah it was, it was a rave um <laughs> yeah actually i'm talking about that i'm talking about more than that but yes i am <laughs> talking about that and i actually uh actually took a uh a, a, a little snip of it because i was like this is like the most silliest thing i've ever seen in my life it makes no sense um but in the in that when he goes to the rave he's like oh he finds finds people that aren't afraid of him and okay that was okay because he was supposed to be a costume right right but that scene went on for so long bro Um, it did yeah yeah like i think they were yeah what? what we, I think they were trying to develop the Venom character there. I think that, like that was a moment where they were supposed to be like, you know, like his speech on stage was was too long, basically. Yeah, that's I, I snapped that. Hopefully, it doesn't get us removed from YouTube right now. But <laughs> yeah, I snapped that because good. like it's so silly. It's almost like it was put in there so that those screens, you know, people, people would be sharing screenshots of Venom in like raver gear and all that. And I don't know. Didn't fit. Yeah, his speech was too long. I didn't see the point of it. And you know, a lot of the a lot of the, a lot of the arguing they did started to annoy me a little bit. You know? Mm, yeah. I, don't, I I can't explain it, but I was like getting annoyed. They kept arguing about the same thing. Okay, so he needs this chemical that is found in brains and chocolate. And chocolate, right? Yeah. Okay. Great. And the word, I don't know what the word, it was, it was a, too hard of a word to grab. Right. It took a long time for them to get to that point. Um, so Venom basically wants to kill people that right. are bad. So that didn't change. So at least he's following the rules and he continues to follow the rules even when he leaves Eddie Brock's body, which is sort of surprising. Right. Well, um, yeah. Right. But. I also don't entirely not understand the rules. Like when he enters someone's body, does that person doesn't die? But well, they... I, yeah, not everybody has the strength, I guess. To you know, he uses them up basically. Right. From for whatever reason, he has this symbiosis with Eddie, where that's not the case. Uh, you know, I just can I go over a few of the good things first. I would like to talk about a couple of good things from the movie. Yeah, um, right. <clears throat> I thought they did a good job of showing the duality of Eddie and Venom. So Venom is voiced by Tom Hardy. So Tom Hardy does him and he also does Venom's voice. There was a lot of them talking back and forth to each other. Um, Also Venom sharing what Eddie really thinks in his head because he knows Eddie more now that this is a second movie. Right. In the first movie. Yeah. In the first movie, he couldn't really, he didn't know Eddie, so he couldn't really say what he was thinking. But now in this movie, Venom is basically saying in Eddie's head what Eddie's really thinking, and Eddie's saying something else. For example, when his ex-girlfriend is, um, is uh, you know, she basically announces that she's going to be marrying uh, Dr. Dan. Oh, I love Dr. Dan, by the way. Yeah, he, he was really good in this movie. Uh, but uh, Michelle Williams, who plays Anne Wayne, um, you know, is of course his love interest. He's still in love with her and, and it kills him. And so there's this whole scene where she's basically telling him and Venom is, is basically saying inside of Eddie, what Eddie really feels. And I thought that was really well done. Yes, um, it was. You know, so the duality of showing Eddie and Venom, they also really tried to show that Venom has a very big um, ego. It has a, has his own personality in a sense that frankly speaking, overshadows Eddie's character completely in this movie. Yes. Um, I'll yeah, go into why, yeah, I'll go into why Eddie is, is disappoint, disappointing in this movie, but this is definitely like learning more about Venom, learning that Venom has, you know, almost bipolar tendencies to some, you know, some degree, um, is very sensitive. Um, and it makes for some comedy in some kind of interesting things. Um, I thought Woody Harrelson was really good in this movie as a bad guy. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that he did some really, really good things. He pulled some of his um, um, natural born killers. Yeah. From yeah. It. He had a natu- yeah, totally had a natural born killers vibe from it. Yeah. Especially when he's like stomping that um, convenience store workers, right. head, you know, and just kind of, so it was, it was, it was a really good acting performance by Woody. Um, I would even say that his, his, um, his girlfriend or, or wife, 
uh, Francis Barrison, played by Naomi Harris, was good acting, but I got a lot of negatives on her coming up. Um, and as far as uh, as that, besides that, maybe the end credit scene, I really feel like that's all there was that was good about this movie. Well, no, I, I okay, okay, that's fine. I do feel for me. like right, right. I do feel like they they expanded on their relationship. And for a minute there, it seemed like the symbiote only cared about Eddie because he needed Eddie. But then when Eddie got like, what was like heartbroken by his ex fiance, um, the symbiote seemed to have actual empathy toward Eddie, which frankly, we need so. to see that because in the first movie and this movie up to that moment, it just seemed like he was just a parasite on Eddie. Um, right. And it wasn't a true symbiotic relationship. But when he showed empathy, you're like, oh, okay, he actually does like Eddie. Like, he likes Eddie. Yeah, well, and that's <clears throat> obvious. I mean, that's kind of the whole thing of like him and his head and the relationship building uh, for for Venom. We learn more about Venom, you know, because the reality is, is Eddie doesn't really like Venom as much as Venom likes Eddie. Right. And that, and, and, okay, and on that same note, you're totally right about Eddie's character being disappointing because, because I feel like. What does Eddie bring to the table other than a body, it seems? Yeah, oh, great. So I'm so glad you picked up on that because the disappointment, I think I think Tom Hardy, as great of an actor as he is, and he is a great actor, I think that he is so caught up in the character of Venom in whatever he's creating there that he has, it's too much for him to do two characters, I think. Because the character of Eddie, uh, you know, we'll just go into it. There's a weird opening sequence where he basically create you know he basically creates uh he gets the he gets woody harrelson's character uh killed or, or he's, he's going to be killed in the uh at the whatever it is the death put chamber. Death, put to death yeah put to death uh because of something that he finds it happens really it's quick and choppy and eddie just kind of looks like he doesn't really give a crap about anything so it seems then like I'll, yeah like venom has to walk him through that entire process it should have, yeah it should have they should have had an equal sort of uh you know what right. it should have been? It should have been Eddie and Venom together solving right. that puzzle. Like Eddie should have right. looked and been like, what is this about? They should have been like, they should have, they should have had like a little bit of an inner dialogue. Instead, it was like, no, idiot. Look, let me draw it for you. Right. Pay attention, dummy. It's over there. So, Get it together, dummy. You're like, whoa, hold up. I thought it's not equal partnership. Like, what is this about? Well, and it makes it, it really makes it bad. One of my complaints about the first movie was I really didn't like uh the way Tom Hardy played Eddie's character because he came across as kind of a dummy. And I get that he's supposed to be this guy who makes a lot of mistakes, but he's a journalist. He's a, uh, he's like a journalist that is pretty popular in San Francisco, but they make him act like he's some dumb, like uh, low level blue collar worker. I'm not saying blue collar workers are dumb, but I'm trying to say like they gave that, that extraordinarily uh, average imbecile. Right. Well, they, they gave that, kind of um they they gave him that uh you know, what is it when somebody is uh when you pretend like somebody is something when you you put them in a oh you know a bad drivers or whatever because you're a whatever yeah stereotype a stereotype so they stereotype him as kind of like this dummy and uh but he's supposed to be this really intelligent journalist but he sounds kind of you know, I'm not saying, listen, people from Brooklyn, very smart people. But when you talk like this all the time, it's you kind of come across a little bit slow. I'm not sure why they're from. Uh, I don't understand why they're in San Francisco. Yet Eddie and the cop um, both talk like they're from Brooklyn or from New York. Yeah, what's interesting is that character of Eddie Brock is supposed to be from uh, Queens. Okay, which that kind of makes sense then, if that's the case. If he's from Queens, but I guess he's still holding on to that accent. I don't know why the uh, cop does. Let me tell you what happened. Because I don't know I don't know in the movie if he's from Queens. In oh. the comic books and the cartoons and all that, the character is from Queens because that's where the well, that's where okay. Spider-Man's from. Oh, so the character is but so they're not from San Francisco. No, no, no. The character is from Queens okay. because that's where Spider-Man's from. And uh Venom was a Spider-Man character that spawned off his own own story. Right. But this right. what happened. I think the studio was like. We're not ready to explain where Venom is yet in the Spider-Man universe. Right. So we need to put them on the other coast. Well. So that the question can still be brought up whether or not they're in the same universe. <clears throat> they should have just put them back in, in Queens. 
honestly. Well, they, they made a mistake then because I, they both, the cop and Eddie, has, go into this like like Queens or Brooklyn accent and then try and be in, you know, uh, Pac the Ka kind of stuff. You know, it's, that's actually Boston. But, you know, they, they go into this like, uh, thing where you're, I'm, you get confused as their location sometimes. Like you know, that's not the way people out I here. I think talk. that I think that Tom Hardy was like, okay, the character is from Queens. I'm gonna have this Queen accent, or I'm gonna let this shine through. I think the studio was like, no, we gotta put them on the West Coast because Spider Man's on the East Coast right now. We don't know where we're gonna put them yet. That makes sense. I think I think that's what happened. Um, and you're but you're totally right. And here's the deal: in the first movie, at least I thought that uh, that he was more uh, Eddie was more of like a Tim Pool kind of character, like out there with his camera getting the skinny on the right on the you know, he had his own tv show yeah he, he had his own tv show i remember watching that that movie and thinking oh wow this is sort of like like it's almost like tim pool circa like the occupy wall street days where he would yeah it was just him with his camera investigative himself, reporter yeah, investigative reporter going out there getting the skinny on and doing stuff that other journalists don't want to do because it's like a little rougher and it, it, it made me under, understand that character and be like okay that's cool that's cool. Um, but in this one, it was almost like he couldn't do any actual journalism without Venom being there, which is weird. To and he, he actually tried to at one point without Venom, and he looked like he struggled. Remember, yeah, yeah. Venom was gone, and he was like trying to like figure it out and solve it. And he shows up at the school, like is the easiest thing in the planet. Like of all the leads for him to follow, he shows up at the school, and then he calls the police and say, oh, I think I found something out. There's a, there's a, uh, what was it? A CK loves fb on the you know on the tree you know and the cop of course happens to be the one who shot her and even and the cop was like no nah, it's a dead end dummy you're like yeah, oh, it, come on it's like you know so there was it really made him look dumb and i gotta tell you it took away from the movie for me because they only hinted towards his kind of venom being i know this movie's venom i know it's called venom but really the symbiosis between eddie and venom is what's critical and they do try to show that they don't really work without each other but they're forced back together by carnage and not because they truly figure, you know, work it out. Right. And Venom is forced back to Eddie. Eddie's forced to look for Venom because of carnage. And Venom is forced to be with, Ven Ven with Eddie because he realized he can't, he has no other host. And they made a mistake not having Eddie have any empathy for carnage or for, uh, um, for Venom. They just, he, he doesn't, he's happy that he's gone. He's watching football He's having a good time. He's not, I mean, Venom destroys his motorcycle. And he gets, I mean, I don't get the feeling at all that he misses him. And he's like, oh, I got to go get him, you know? It seemed like by the end of the movie, though, they were like buds watching TV together. That was that was different. I mean, they were, yeah, I, def, I think definitely they grew through this. But we didn't feel that growth. I didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt like the movie at an hour and 30, and I knew, I told you, I said, you know, red flag right away. That's an hour and a half movie. There are no good hour and a half movies, guys. I just, let's be frank here. They're really, of all the great movies, hour and a half is too short. And uh, there are other issues that we're going to talk to you about, too. So no, I think you're wrong. A good comedy could be an hour and a half. There are no good superhero movies that are an hour and a half. Long. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. And no good. Yeah. I see a movie that's <laughs> an hour and a half and I go, whoop, meet the minimum requirement to be a movie. You know, and... Right. Uh, there's things that are in this movie that just don't make a lot of sense. Yeah. The choppy opening sequence is weird. Yeah. And the opening sequence was choppy. It was choppy. It's like they chopped a lot out of that opening storyline. It was almost like the studio was like, look, guys, we yeah. already know the story of Venom. Just, right. Just, just explain explain um, Carnage so we can get to the good part. Yeah. No, that's exactly what happened. And I got to tell you, it's weird because he talks about the fact that Eddie's on the, on the downs. Right. And and Venom got him back on the ups because they captured they basically found out where where uh, Cletus hid the, the dead body that he that he killed. Right. Right. And but it didn't show Eddie being on top like it said Eddie's on top again, but it didn't show Eddie being on top other than maybe he had a new motorcycle. Yeah. New motorcycle, new TV. You're like, but he right. still lives in a crappy apartment. You don't even see what he's doing. How what's his job? Right. I mean, you write one good story and all of a sudden you got money. That's not how it works. That's not remotely how it works. <clears throat> No, it should have um, shown him doing his TV show or something again, you know? Right, yeah, that would have been like, okay, now that's success. There are some nice scenes, I will say, with uh, um, Mrs. Chen. Uh, that yeah, Mrs. Chen knows that Venom, Eddie has shared the secret with her that he has Venom because she's feeding, she's basically getting the food, getting the chocolate, 
uh, for Venom. And so there's one point where Venom actually comes to her, which I thought was actually a nice scene showing, look, he needs somebody. He didn't go back to Eddie. I guess he's too proud, too prideful. But he went to Mrs. Chen and she allowed him to, which I would have been scared as heck to allow him to symbiosis me well and her her empathy for him was also cool too she was like yes you know she felt bad for him and yeah, the, she, gave, she actually was loving tender to this dead body that right and the fiance felt empathy toward venom like he she was worried about venom and oh that, you're talking about his ex his ex-girlfriend his ex-fiance girlfriend. whatever yeah, yeah she true. felt that you know it's funny like yeah the only character that didn't actually show that knew of venom that actually didn't show very much empathy or Ventura venom was eddie <laughs> yeah or any or any empathy was that right, any yeah uh, um so that was a big problem but there were some other issues with continuity like um naomi harris did a good job as francis barrison i thought her acting was good but there were problems here. Her, we find out that her special, she has a special ability where she can basically, you know, make the sound with her mouth that destroys people's ears or hearing. Right. And it affects carnage and venom, uh, damaging them, making them stop or, you know, doing their superhero stuff. But here's the problem I got with her. So granted, so she, she, they take her away and lock her up in this high, uh, this facility when she's Raven a kid. Crop. Yeah, she's a she's a kid and they lock her into Ravencroft. Uh, she gets out and uh, basically Carnage throws her and 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 Cletus, Woody Harrelson's character, into this Mustang. And she drives like some badical person who's been driving cars her whole life. Yet she was a kid when she went in. She probably never drove a car in her entire life. Did you catch that? Oh, yeah. Good point. She'd never driven a car. She was a kid when she was taken to the place and then she was locked up. So she's literally never driven a car. And right. yet she drove it like Fast and Furious style. That was a little bit of a problem. Um, some of the well, other... Uh, one more thing about Ravencroft. Another issue with Ravencroft is like Ravencroft is sort of like Arkham Asylum okay. of, the, of the Spider-Man universe, right? That's like, cool because I've never seen that before. So that was good. Right. So in Spider-Man, uh, his Arkham is... Ravencroft and it's a Spider-Man Easter egg. Um, and I was actually looking up other people that had gone there. Apparently like green goblin, you know, okay. was what ended up going to Ravencroft, but it's another one. Another, another thing that it is a Spider-Man and Cletus Cassidy and other crazy people in this better. It's a Spider-Man uh, thing. I guess that, I guess because it was introduced in a Venom comic book, now it's a Venom thing, but in the in the comic books, like it was definitely on the East Coast, like it was like in the Hamptons or something. Uh, um, oh, it was on Rikers Island, right? Oh, uh, okay. Um, so I don't know. It's, it's another another sort of. Uh, I guess in this universe, that's not where it's at. It's a little off putting to me because I feel okay. like while it's a cool Spider Man um, Easter egg. There's so many things. There's so, you know. There's a lot, a lot to unpack when it comes to Ravencroft. You have like, I mean, I'm just looking like there's a ton of really cool villains that come from Ravencroft, just like Arkham does. Okay. So you've already burned the, that Easter egg, though. Even though you did show that that's where superpowered people are kept, so maybe right. that can become up again. It just. Um, I don't know, maybe the end credit scene sort of fixes all that because of the way it shifted, but we'll get into that. I don't know. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, I hope so. Well, but there's a few other issues. I don't understand how, um, I don't understand how she was able to, um, I don't understand how Francis Barrison was able to just beat the crap out of Detective Mulligan constantly. Like she manhandled him like she was a superhero threw him around, had her way with him, was able to pull him up by a chain and hang him like she has superhuman strength, right? Basically just toasts him because she's wanting to get back at him because he shot her. But it was very unrealistic, I thought, that whole situation. He was a complete victim to her, um, which was kind of weird. Um, I also felt like... And there's that moment too in the movie where like, apparently he has superpowers or something. Yeah, so they didn't explain how that happened. It looks like he's going to end up becoming um, Toxin. So apparently in the comics, Patrick Mulligan becomes Toxin, which is the third biggest symbiote in the Marvel Universe. Oh. The problem did, is... And that's cool. 
But how did he get infected? How, yeah. how did it happen? It he wasn't in, he couldn't be he spent all this time, and this is where there's these continuity problems that Andy Circus needs to be criticized for is because how does Francis Barrison infect Detective Mulligan? Because there's no moment when, I mean, you could say that maybe Carnage infects him, but there was no moment where he bit Carnage or had some sort of moment where Carnage, you know, went into his body or something. No, in fact, this... yeah, but he didn't, I mean, I'm sorry, go ahead. You're right. No, it's just this continuity problem because yeah. all of a sudden he's like beat up, she's jacked him up um and he opens his eyes and they're blue and you're like okay what did i miss did i what did i miss did i miss something and that's what it felt like uh during that whole scene yeah did you feel the same way about that yeah no i think you're right and i was reading like the um i was reading like the the creation of toxin it's weird because toxin actually ends up being like a sort of a pseudo anti-hero too mm -hmm. which is weird but it is between Venom and Carnage. So Toxin is comes comes from from Carnage. But because Carnage was like a copy of some or some some I don't know. Toxin is not like a not like a very good copy of a copy. Yeah. And so I guess it's make it makes time. It takes time for the symbiote to they need to explain more. Like this is that that yeah. was that was like, oh, let me just let me just throw those eyes in there and throw yes. Patrick Mulligan. So that people get excited, but like, but if you actually plan to use him now, there's like this giant hole that doesn't explain anything. You know, they probably shot it and honestly, it's probably on the floor. They probably cut it on the, on the editing floor because of some sort of issue, uh, because of this hour and 30 minute thing that I don't know. It's, it's really weird to me and it doesn't make a lot of sense. And, and honestly, I, I don't. If the studio said, Andy, this is what I need you to do, then that's fine. But this is a huge hit on Andy Circus. Yeah, because like uh, if it was that easy to get infected with the symbiotes, then there are a lot of people that Venom yes. infected. Right. A lot, right? A lot. Have, like, have he, you know, killed, went into their bodies, whatever, you know. Um, it's it's yeah, weird. Like Dan and and the and the girlfriend. Yeah, which that was a cool scene when Venom is coming down and he goes through he he goes through Dan through his girlfriend uh, who's holding his hand and into Eddie right it right before Eddie hits the floor that was cool. Yeah, there were some cool scenes. I mean, there was some cool. I mean, the graphics were good. the The fight scenes were okay. They were you know, nothing groundbreaking or anything. I mean, big giant CGI boss fights. That's what it was. You know. Yeah, it's but cool, the, it was cool. Cool to watch. Yeah, it was it was cool to watch, but I felt weird because of all the problems. So I didn't enjoy it as much. Yeah. But here's yeah. another problem that they got. So why why did why was Francis Barrison not the person to take down Carnage? They set it up the entire movie because every time she would use her voice thing, it would hurt him, and he'd be like, "I'm gonna eat her. I'm gonna kill her. Tell her to shut up. You know, tell her to shut up. Whatever." And it happened so many times. And finally, he all out attacks her, knocks her out. She's down for the count. Woody Harrelson has no control over Carnage whatsoever. Cletus has no control over Carnage. Finally, Venom and Eddie realize, oh, she, you know, we need sound. And they turn around and Venom smacks the crud out of her. And she goes flying into the chapel, breaks the bell, and then she screams. And I'm just like going, why did he do that? Was he sure she was going to make a sound? I mean, what was... What motivated him to smack the crud out of her? Yeah. Okay. So first off, her. you're totally right. Halfway through the movie, my wife is like, I think that she's going to end up being the one that kills Carnage. Yeah. hundred percent. That's she what tells me that. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. That's the setup, right? <clears throat> what I was thinking. Yeah. And like, she has to kill in order, in order to save her man, she's got to kill Carnage. Right. Um, and that's what I, she's got to save her man, kill Carnage. And it was somehow. set up. Woody's freaking yeah. out. Right. Yeah, I think that when he hit her, he was like, oh, well, she's going to scream on the way down and that will do it for me. Well, uh, but that didn't make any sense because he doesn't know if she's going to scream. He doesn't know if that's where she's going to fall. Most he just hit her really hard around when they fall. But yeah, I get it. Yeah. But he didn't, it wasn't, he just smacked her sideways. You know, he didn't know. No. Anyway, you know, that's when he looks weird. at her and she's like, we need fire and sound or something right. like that. She should have, she should have looked at him like admittedly defeated or whatever and just let it loose to save her her hubby 
Right. Not even she didn't care about Venom, but taking both of them out, she should have. Yeah. Because she Venom, looked at both of them like, ah, she, she was just let loose like like canary. Well, By the way, us- that hero is clearly, that supervillain is clearly just a ripoff of Black Canary. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, it's well, so, obvious, but whatever. Well, they, they did a lot of that in the comic books. But the problem is, is that when Venom is laying there underneath the broken rocks, and uh, Dr. Dan is trying to help him get out, or, or, or uh, Michelle Williams, and Ann Wayne is. Um, they're trying to get out. He's like, we can't beat him, Eddie. He's too strong. We can't beat him. And that was like the the moment. That was like the uh, the signal that it, she was going to be, he was going to be killed by Francis Barrison's character. Like that was the indication. We can't beat him. That's the foreshadowing. What are you trying to say? You know, that was the foreshadowing of that moment. And then it didn't. It didn't play play out. Yeah, know? they got, they, they got to beat him with their brain. Braun isn't working. Well, and then and then Francis Barrison didn't really do anything. Not really. She did the sound. Uh, the entire chapel crumbles, and somehow Carnage ends up separated from Cletus Cassidy. No, they're both separated. The reason why Tom Hardy lived through that fall was when Venom was coming down. Dan had his arm up there. Right. And he went through his arm, went through his arm into his, uh, into the, he was holding hands with the fiance, the ex, the girlfriend. Yeah. And he goes through the girlfriend and her, her hand through her other hand and into the falling Eddie and saves his life right before he hits the ground. Okay. Right. Somehow I missed that during that. I don't know. It was how. a really cool scene though. The, like, yeah. By the way, Dan's awesome. <laughs> Dan, they, and they didn't play that better because Dan should have gotten a moment here in this movie at the end. They had plenty of time to do it. They needed a moment to recognize Dan's heroism Dan for was his a, fiance. Dan was, a, Dan was the hero, like on three separate occasions. And yeah. Additionally, dealing with the fact that Ed Hardy, who is clearly a schizophrenic, is constantly hitting on his wife, <laughs> assaulting him randomly, smacking him in the face. Yeah, he, takes he still a lot. comes to him. And in that moment when she when she puts him in the trunk, I love that he's like he's like he's gonna kill you both. Right. That was a cool line, bro. Yeah. He gets he gets no credit, dude, and he needs that character needs to get more cred, you know. Yeah, maybe and the recognition. actor just killed it, man. It's possible the actor like this is supposed to be a side character, but he just sold it. He did well, and you know, and Tom Hardy, frankly, didn't play a very good Eddie Brock. I'm sorry. That yeah. line when he says he's gonna kill you both, you know, was like he is at the whim of a super villain yeah. who's gonna kill him. And he goes, he's gonna kill you both, you know. And you're like, because yeah. if I would, be, I'd be like, I'd be like, eh, please don't hurt me. Right. <laughs> I wouldn't be this cocky guy. Right. It was cool. And then he's fighting the, the symbiote. Oh, who shows up with the gasoline? Right. Dan. Dan throws the he gasoline. Did. On you're the right. Symbiote. He's he's trying. He's in there the whole time. He's aware man. of what needs to happen the whole yeah. time. He's trying to assist Venom. The guy was awesome. In fact, Eddie would be dead right now. Had Dan not had his arm up there for the symbiote to even come through in the first place. Yeah, I agree. And if they have a third movie. Dan's the hero of this movie. They need to sever Eddie from Anne's character. They did that thing should not go any further. You've you you've you've heroized uh Dr. Dan to the point where if you put Eddie with Anne, it's gonna ruin it's gonna be it's not gonna feel right. Oh, Dan yeah, no, no, has no. to be with Anne. Yeah, yeah. No, Dan, yes, you're right. Right? Dan needs to get the girl. He needs to get the girl. He has dealt with all the BS. Right. I know they have a lot of baggage. He's dealt with it. He's get, he's still helped Eddie. He's been the good friend. He's been the good boyfriend. He's been supportive in every way. No, no, no. It need they need to have a friendship. They he can't get the girl anymore. It just no, can't happen. It can't happen. And and so Eddie's character needs to separate from Ann. The, the, we need this whole like carrying a torch for Anne needs to stop. 100%. Now, it's th- that's got to be over and they got to move on. Anne's character um, was cool though too. The way she played the actress that played that character did a great job. She did. She and yeah, Michelle Williams did she was great. Like, Never again. Well, oh, maybe good. again cuz it was fun. That was a cool line. Yeah. They they did good. The acting was fine. It was really a directorial problem with this movie and we didn't get enough content. Editing, directorial and, and Eddie character. And Tom Hardy failed on Eddie Brock's character. The greatest was, Venom though. He's great as Venom, and I think that's where his focus went. Also, I, I do have a huge problem with the fact that they use the P word, that they said F this guy, that they there was just so much cussing from Venom that I just don't think it was necessary. And I, I wish these studios would remember that that the reason they're PG-13 is because we're taking our 
our families to these movies. And these are not words that I want my kids to hear, you know, and most, yeah. uh, most adults do not want. So here's the deal. I, I, I didn't like it At, on a PG 13 movie. You can, it's a, to keep a PG 13 rating. You can use the F word once. It, well, it was used more than once, I believe. Wasn't no, it? it was only used once. It was in that one scene. And it wasn't just the F word. It was like, yeah, was the, the problem direct. was they said a bunch of other stuff. We also don't want our kids hearing. And there was so much of it that in your mind, you thought, oh, they cussed a lot. Well, because they yeah. did, it just wasn't the hard words, right? No, no, there were some harder words that were like above and beyond. Like if it would have just been a couple of the normal, you know, lower class cussing words, but it wasn't. It was, I felt like Venom was potty mouth most of the darn movie. Well, he only, he only said the F, the F word once. But yeah, you're yeah. right. He was a potty mouth the rest of the movie. Um, although if you get one time to say the F word, I feel like that was the perfect time to say the F word. I guess so. I guess, I don't know. Because I just didn't, didn't, look, I they, they get one F word for a PG-13 rating. They say the point of this pivotal moment. What was the point? What was the point? What was the, you didn't even hate the guy that much. You didn't even hate the Woody Harrelson character at all. Well, that's like, nothing too. Woody Harrelson's character, like Cletus. Yeah. So he was a bad guy, a serial killer. But then they also like showed why he was a bad guy. And, Bro, he it's it, it was his life sucked. Yeah, this was the story of Cletus Cassidy. That right. Was it. Woody was about it. My my wife was like, my wife was like, uh, when he was like, all I ever wanted was for you to like for you to be my friend. When he said that, my wife was like, my wife literally made a uh sound for yeah. the bad guy. And then Venom ate his head. He was like, F this guy. And Eddie I says, know. and Eddie says, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And he was, he, he I got to tell you, Eddie sounded more empathetic to Cletus than he ever did to Venom the entire movie. Yeah. I mean, I, I did like that scene. Ah, well, because I, because I, because you're right. And I, I guess they I pandered liked, to you. I liked Cletus. So you liked that he was killed by Venom in that scene. You no, like that? I mean, yes, because that is a, that's what, that's what, ben, that's a Venom thing. That's what Venom does. Venom is not a good guy on his own. Right. He's a good guy because he's in a good guy's body. Right. With a good guy's mind shaping his, influencing his actions. But That's Venom right. is a monster. So Cletus's character needed to be more of a monster so that we as an audience accepted that final line. I, mean, I was, felt he was no... A pretty bad monster. He in what way? We saw nothing. We saw nothing. Right, because the movie should have been rated R. Thank you for letting me segue. This okay. should have been an R-rated movie you should have, Cletus should have been allowed. You should have seen him stomping that guy to death. Sorry to right. say, if you want us to hate Cletus, all you ever show is Cle the Cletus or Carnage, whatever, or the two of them doing things off camera. He would pull someone in the, some guard and it was implied that the guard was dead. You never right. actually showed any of this horrific crap. His girlfriend or wife or whatever um shriek was like uh baby this is too much when he was right. going to kill his girl even she was like oh this is too much well see it's only too much because we as the audience didn't see the rest of it right but also cletus's character was it not in control at any point they prove that they're not symbiotic they say it they're not in, they're not symbiotic so basically carnage once he entered woody Her uh cletus's body carnage is doing everything and he's just along for the ride i don't think so i don't think so i think I think that, I didn't get that impression. I think there were there was clear mo 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 moments where he was in control and Cle and Carnage was just a passenger. And really, he is I, a well, bad like, guy, yeah. guys. He's definitely a serial killer. He, he is killed, a serial he killed killer. more than just his wife, just his grandma and his mom. I know, I know that he is. I know that they said he is, but you don't get the feeling. And also, I don't remember any scenes where he's in control of Carnage. I didn't notice that at all. When he stomps that guy, he's in control. He was himself at that moment. He wasn't Carnage. Are oh, you talking about when he's in control of Carnage as Carnage? You're right. Oh yeah. You're right. Never. I and that. just the same thing with Eddie. It's like it's like Eddie is a passenger inside Venom. There's never this feeling that they're working together. You know, I don't get that sense. Um, but maybe I just need a longer movie to convince me. Right. I think you need. This is what I think. This is what saves Carnage, uh, Venom two for me. I think the movie needs to be longer. I think all those scenes that you clearly left on the cutting room floor, like showing the the toxin, you know, the toxic, whatever that that character's thing, um, showing more of Cletus being a monster in his own right without carnage, um, showing Eddie 
able to actually exist on his own or what he brings to the table in that duo. There's a lot of stuff you left on the ta- on the floor and you, you kept as much Venom stuff as you could because that's the cool moments. And I get it. Probably the ones that cost the most amount of money too. But the movie was so short, you left too much on the floor that actually gives us a a story that's not choppy. Gives us a story where the characters have proper motivations that allow us to actually get into them and, under, and understand the character and, and maybe maybe cheer when he, when they're killed or feel sad for them. Whatever the, the, the point is, I'm not sure. That needed to be a longer movie. Additionally, on top of the length, it needed to be an R-rated movie, not PG-13. Well, I would, I would argue the other way, that it needed to be a... Um... It could have been a PG-13 movie and she had a little bit more, uh, give, just given Woody Harrell, given Cletus's character a little more of an edge. He shouldn't have said all I ever wanted was a friend and then get eaten by, it should have been it. It should have been him trying to trick him at the end. All I ever wanted was a friend and then him try to like stab him or do something weird so that, you know what I'm saying? There should have been like some sort of moment where- You don't where think he, there should have been an R-rated movie though? I, no, because I want to take my kids to see these comic book movies, bro. Right, I don't, but this, I, is, this movie is Venom. Right, I it's still, so I understand you never watched. You never read kids the comic, comic book. book. It's still a kids comic book, man. Nah, this was never a kids comic book, though. I know you yeah. think all comic books are kids for kids. That's not the case. Well, though. W- when I was a kid, all my friends read Venom and Spider Man comics, so I'm assuming that it was for kids. Maybe it was not meant for children, but you know, no, it was definitely like- not for younger kids. At the very at the at the most, I would say teenagers. But like comics also can show more without and get away with more because they're not. It's not a moving picture. But well, like then make, yeah, never make seeing sense. Venom actually kill anybody is sort of nuts. Right, that's but like, the moment like, that's true. I'm sorry to cut you off, but the moment Venom crosses over with Spider Man, which we're going to talk about here in a second, it, you know, now you're bringing kids into it. So you can't keep it rated R. This is this weird middle ground. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't work. Yeah. They don't make enough money when it's rated R, when people can't bring their kids. It's bad for the studio. It's, it's. I mean, sure, the fans, I mean, sure, adults, you, my and your age, we want to be able to go, you know, by ourselves and watch a really cool movie that's rated R, maybe. But uh, I don't know, people in our age demographic generally have families. Right. So I just don't know how this movie, even the, the character, it's the, even the character of Venom is scary. Like, it is true. It, you, you, young children will be frightened uh, just by the look of this character. So maybe they should have just gone, gone all in on the rated R, but then they wouldn't have been able to match him up with Spider-Man down the road. Perhaps. So what you're saying is, you know, kill some of the language that was 100 percent unnecessary. Yeah. And g- g- give, you know, now you buy yourself a little more rating and give some of that edge to give it to Cletus's Cletus. character. Or, right. you know, you can really bypass all this. If you just told a proper story ah, and didn't yeah, cut go. so much out, then most of these complaints would be minimal at best. I think you're right. Ultimately, what I'll say about this movie is the movie feels short and incomplete. I, I believe that this was a, a an uninspiring movie that was basically a money grab, uh, p- paving the way and preparing for a Spider-Man connection. That's my official opinion of the movie. I agree with you, but I'll tell you this. That exact same thing already happened in the Marvel movie with Captain Marvel. Yeah, I mean, that was uninspiring cash grab. Let me see. If I put these two movies up together, which one was more entertaining? I Sadly, I'm going to tell you Captain Marvel was a better movie than this one. And, wow. I, and that's sad because Captain Marvel is not a good movie. Right, but like that movie came out in between Infinity right. War and Endgame. The purpose of it was to introduce a character that no one cared about, no one knew. Right. And they knew it would make a billion dollars, but it was between these. I mean, it was a clear cash grab. Yeah, that was a total cash grab. But I mean, if you're trying to like compare movies, like it, you don't really want to go that route because there weren't like all these plot holes in, even though there were problems with with uh, with that movie, there weren't the crazy weird plot holes that was in this movie. This movie feels sort of like a second rate movie to me. Well, I mean, as far, I'm, I'm talking about as far as the business of it, their, oh, they, yeah. Their, their their purpose was the same. At the very least, Venom furthered the storyline of Venom, and it was a little bit. Yeah, you know, you got a little bit more of Venom. You got more of Venom, I think, in that character for sure in this movie. But let's talk about the exciting end credit scene because I really think that they made this movie just to do the end credit scene. Yeah, that's all anybody's going to talk about because but that's no, all they made the movie just for the end credit scene. No, the end the end credit scene was absolutely. Now you know. 
First off, Venom is definitely in the Spider-Man universe. Right. He was never in the Spider-Man. This is the crazy part. He was not in the Spider-Man universe before. Okay. Which means the whole, we're going to put Venom on the West Coast. So because Spider-Man's on the East Coast thing was a complete waste of time. Right. So I know that that was a clever way of keeping them separate until they wanted to use them together. But the fact that there was clearly a shift there and that's what shifted them into the Spider-Man universe. And it was a different universe because he was now all of a sudden in someone else's room. Right. Right. And instead of that was, that was weird. Right. And instead of a crappy room, it was now a nice room. So in that universe, can can you walk it, walk people through that scene real quick. All right. So that way you get it because this is important. So we got Eddie and Venom and they took off. They're like in a Caribbean Island somewhere, maybe the Bahamas. I don't know. Yeah, There's, nice scene of Venom with his feet in the sand. I right. thought it was cool. They're on the beach, his feet in the sand. It's actually a really cool scene. He's, you know, Venom and him are actually coexisting. Yes, they're buddies. Right. Venom's actually easy. easy. Venom's feeling the, the toe, the sand between his toes or whatever. They're watching a novella. A novella is a Spanish soap opera. That was the take for your wife earlier. I knew that she would like that, that yes. scene because she, you say she likes the novellas. Right. My um, mother in law also loves the novellas. Right. And they're watching him and they're both into it. They're like, that person doesn't deserve it. Yeah, you're right. And they're right. arguing like buddies watching a TV show, which is great. Yeah. And then when he goes, and then you see, then Eddie says something to Car- uh, Venom in the long lines of like his, his knowledge base, like what, you know how much know you know or whatever. I don't know. Right. But Venom says, "Look, man, I've, I've, I've traveled forty billion years. I have all the knowledge of all the symbionts that ever made. Right. You know, I can't if I shared it with you, your brain would explode." And then he's like, uh, give me a little piece. He's like, okay, I'll give you a little piece. You ready for it? And I guess right when he's like going to give him a little piece, like the whole universe switch it changes. And well, this is- I think him giving him that piece is what shifted the universe. That's what made the shift happen. Him giving him the knowledge is what shifted the universe because it happened a few seconds after he was starting to process the knowledge. And then everything went haywire. Well, that's interesting. So this is what happened. So the color grading of that scene was very uh, cool, right? Right. Here, I'll show you. It looked like this. I'm sorry, wrong one. Right? Look, look, looked like this. Very cool. And then when it switched over, all of a sudden the color grading went to real warm, <laughs> like that, right? Right. And so that the purpose of that in movies and TV is to show you that the, the either the scene has changed, the location or perhaps the time of the day, or in this situation, the actual universe. So right. they were no, they're no longer in the universe. And here's a great example for you Stargate fans. You know, when they go to one planet, and it's it's all, it's all a, it's a desert and it's sandy, but it has like that cool overtone, that's to show you, that is for the, so, so the audience feels like this is an alien planet because there's no cool deserts, right? Right. The purpose well, of that is to throw the throw the coloring off to explain the difference of where they're at. But I think even more important. I mean, they're more overt than that because they're they're actually in somebody else's room now. It had been their room. Now they're in somebody else's room. Right. So, but the coloring changes. That was my first indication that something weird had happened. There had been a shift. Okay. Maybe it's because I don't understand coloring. I don't know. Probably it's right. yeah, it was not obvious to me. But yeah. But it's... now they're and they're on the bed and like there's and Venom's like, oh, what's that? And he's like, oh, it's just a little. It's a weird dove or whatever. Yeah, it, the sheets had changed. There the was sheets some had weird... changed. The towels were now in like the shape of ducks or whatever. Right. The TV was different. And instead of a small crappy TV, it's a nicer TV. And there's no longer a novella on it. What is on the TV? Yes. Uh, the man himself, um, Jay Jonas, right? I oh, you're name. talking about the, yes, for the Daily Bugle. Yes. Yes, the Daily Bugle guy. Which, it's by funny. the way, that's who, now this is very weird, In the, earlier in the movie, that's who Eddie works for. If you looked it up, it, did you see that? Yeah. So in his universe, there is no Spider-Man. Now, all of a sudden, this universe, they've come into their Spider-Man. Everything about this movie oh, happened. No, well, see, that, and this is even more. In the end, the car- actor in the end that car- plays that character in the Spider-Man movies is the yeah. same actor that plays that character in the other Spider-Man movies. Right. Yes. The only actor, it was like, they, that guy did such a good job at that character. That they're like, I don't care about continuity. This guy's going to come back to this job. Yeah, no, it was he was so he, he played plays it the same person that I guess are in multiple universes, and when it switches, it shows Spider Man, and you realize that he's in there, and the dude's like, "Yo, who are you?" Right? Right. Well, so they show Spider Man. Venom goes up to the screen, and he's like, "Who are you?" Licks the screen, right? 
and says, who are you? Who's this guy? Who's this guy? Right. And then somebody walks out of the bathroom and you realize, oh, crud, they really are. And, and now at this point, we realize they're in Spider-Man's universe. So they were not in Spider-Man's universe. Now they're in Spider-Man's universe. Right. Which, right. which will solve this end scene is the most important thing in the entire movie. It's the most interesting yeah. thing. This, this short scene is most interesting. Now the whole relationship with Anne and Dr. Dan doesn't matter because guess what? Those guys, Venom and Eddie, are no longer in that universe. Right. They're also no longer on the run. And they're no longer on the run. They're no longer in that universe. It wipes everything. And kind of a brilliant move in a way. Kind of. I, I know, like to, the fact too, like, like him and Eddie can only afford like a crappy place. But in that universe, that resort is nice. Right. So like that could have been like, that's been, and, and you know, it's funny because like what makes a good resort or a bad resort often it's like management competition locations clearly locations good because they're on the beach somewhere so what in that universe whatever whoever manages that place whoever owns it whatever did a much better job at the success of that that resort right that's than, true than yeah the previous one well and what this also is very interesting because i always wondered why venom and this whole thing's happening where there are no superhero interaction there it's because all the superheroes are in this universe spider-man all the marvel character all the avengers and everybody they're in this universe they were not in his right so this is very interesting and i'll be honest with you uh, i think we needed this end credit scene just to move on to a movie where spider-man and venom are in it because it would have been very hard to do this movie uh on the west coast east coast thing and i think this was actually a pretty smart way to do it well a I mean, the first movie, the movie was so contained though that they could have gotten away with it perhaps yeah maybe but because like when they, when they introduced shriek and how she was just a normal person with powers like a mutant like a yeah mutant, like a like an x-men or whatever right like that may like introducing that character screws that universe up because now you're like okay wait a minute there's super powered people in this universe in this universe right but yet none of the other superheroes are there and that, that doesn't add up to me when, i didn't like when it there either. was no superhero powered people and it was a sci-fi movie because an alien came down, hit this, you know, right. and they were experimenting on it, and he got that made more sense. It's not there's no mutant powers. This was an alien thing, right? That no, felt understand. right to me. <clears throat> so yeah, so I think all all in all, if you watch the movie, just you know, stick around for the end credit, or come at the end of the show and catch the end credit, because honestly, there's not a whole lot more to learn about it than what you get in that final scene, which is critical moving forward at this point. You know, the next movie, Brian. There is no Venom 3 right, without right. Spider-Man. Right. No, the, the fact, no. that's another thing, too. Spider-Man, uh, No Way Home. If that movie doesn't have Venom in it, I think... It, it will, yeah. <clears throat> like, what do fans do there? Well, can I tell you what I think is going to happen? I think it'll have an end credit scene with Venom. Yeah, so or they don't... some sort of recognition. Wait, wait, wait. But they don't fix the multiverse problem? Like well, I don't think this is a multiverse problem. I don't think what happened here was as a result. I mean, it would be interesting if what they're saying is, is in no way home is what brought Venom over. But see, they made a mistake of him sharing his information that makes it feel too much like the sharing of the information was what caused this to happen. If it had just randomly happened while they were talking about the novella, then, then, then we could have said, oh, Spider-Man No Way Home brings Venom into the universe. Right, like when they did the snap thing, how certain people right. would snap out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. the fact that they talked about the information and that's so, what shifted them. Right, so if, they, if that's the case, if it was brought in by Spider-Man uh, Doctor Strange Homecoming whatever. and Doctor Strange's thing, if that's what brings Venom into the universe, then they did a bad job even in this, in this scene to make us confused as to how he came over well there's, so, a, there's another problem with that if that is what brings him over and they're yeah. doing what, the same thing they did with the thanos snap whatever right if that is what brought him over was the doctor strange thing and then yeah they did a good they did a bad job because they talked about the knowledge and all that right but additionally when that problem is hopefully fixed by doctor strange and spider-man i'm assuming we would send him back venom goes back So maybe it doesn't get fixed. So either it doesn't get fixed or you're right. It has to be something completely outside of Dr. Strange's thing. 
which it has I would something rather. to do with the knowledge or whatever. That way, Venom can stay in that universe and be completely out outside of what it, what it currently was happening. Which and then, honestly, now what, what goes on with Toxin? And well, and I that? yeah, damn it, damn it. well, I hope that that's what, suck. <laughs> well, and I hope that's that's what happens because what they should have seen on that TV screen was this Spider Man guy's name is Peter Parker. So if if it was something like that where he bring, well no I guess everybody forgets Spider Man's name supposedly when Doctor Strange does his spell right unless they weren't from the universe to begin with interesting yeah so and so maybe maybe it's him, maybe because he's not even from this universe right maybe it has something to do with the knowledge or whatever which I would love to see the science behind that they're gonna have to connect it somehow to let us know but it, I yeah, mean because at some point we need to see. We need to see Spider-Man with a Venom symbiote, right? Right. That's what the look, the That's way the this needs to end. <laughs> the way this needs to end. I don't care how many movies it takes. But if you don't end with Tom Holland Spider-Man wearing that damn black suit, you're wasting my time. <laughs> Straight up. That's how it will likely end. It better end that way. Damn we're, it. we're heading there. Well, that's our take, guys, on uh on uh, venom carnage let there be carnage um you know whether you go see it or not totally up to you but that's our take and i uh, hope you guys enjoyed this brian you got anything else um uh I, all i got is uh all i got is this like subscribe and share and make sure you guys turn and tune into our live show um on fridays at one o'clock yeah yeah okay so stick around members we'll be right back thanks for watching to see the full conversation, become a member of the podcast family. Use the link in the description below or go to our channel and click the join button. Select your tier and we'll see you at the next show.